All right. Here's just a little culmination of everything that we have been doing on that Hershey's Lab Kiss and just really honing in on the items that affect the size of the interval. <clears throat> kind of summarizes everything we've already been talking about. So we're going to talk about <clears throat> this uh, interval, the the values that change the size of the confidence interval. You experienced this in that Hershey's Kiss Lab when you had sample sizes of 400 rather than sample sizes of 100. So let's look at that formula again. Your p hat, your statistic, plus or minus this critical value times that standard deviation. So this is your, again, what are those two things combined? Those two things combined are the margin of error, okay? Big deal that you are able to pinpoint and recognize the part of the formula that is the margin of error. Okay, what does a varying statistic change? So if I change this p hat, then it's going to be, hopefully you could envision that it was shifting those intervals left and right. Okay, when we saw it here, see, look here, that change in that p hat was shifting those intervals left and right. Okay, so that's what changing that p hat is doing. It does a little minimal change to this standard deviation, a little, but not a, a ton, not as much as that effect of the N. Identify the margin of error. What does the varying margin of error change about the interval? Okay, so we kind of did that already. Here is the margin of error. And so that is that critical value times this thing here, the standard deviation or standard error. Changing the margin of error, of course, since that's your whisker, you know, here's your P hat, Changing the margin of error will change the size of this whisker that is going down or above. You are adding or subtracting this margin of error. Okay. So here is this thing. we I kind of summarized everything, and I think this is it on notes. Yep. So here it is, summarizing everything. Increasing the simple sample size. Bumping it up made that standard deviation of the sample smaller. Well, so then that being smaller, the product that makes the margin of error is smaller. And then the interval is smaller. Okay, and so I have my students fill this in in class. They kind of walk through this on their own. What happens if you decrease the sample size? Well, then that makes the standard deviation bigger, making the margin of error bigger, making a larger interval. Okay, now confidence level. Let's talk about confidence level. Remember, 80% confidence might look like this, whereas 95% confidence might look like this. So you can see increasing the confidence level is making a larger critical value, Z star, which of course then makes a larger margin of error. So the, oh, I wrote this wrong. So the interval is, what is larger? Yeah, duh, okay, my bad. Okay, and then the opposite, decrease the confidence level. So go to 80% confidence, then we have a smaller critical value, smaller margin of error, smaller interval. Okay, I'll go fix those on my answer key. Okay, so there's the summary of what things change. And um, there you have it. Now, I'm going to uh, post a separate video once I get those charts made of all of our data because I think that's so interesting and I want to see what that looks like. Uh, I'll show the one with the regular size intervals and I'll show the one with the groups intervals so we can see how much smaller those are. I'm really curious to see um, with that small of a margin of error, what value uh, goes through most of those intervals. Okay. All right. That is all for this. And so then you will do your unit two assign or your day two assignment.